Good morning, everyone. Thanks for filling up all of the seats in this huge auditorium. My name is Bridget Gisby. I'm an HR, HR director at LinkedIn, supporting our sales organization across EMEA. Delighted to introduce you to our three speakers today. We have Mo Kareem, who is a um, business transformation consultant at CBRE. Ordina Chung, all the way from Beijing, head of talent acquisition at Gemalto. And last but not least, Xavier Monti, who is social media director at Sage. All of our panelists are going to be sharing stories with us today about what they've done in their organization to transform the way they hire talent into their companies, how they've brought their leaders and stakeholders along with them on that journey, and most importantly, how they've demonstrated the value of the strategies that they've created to the business. So we're going to kick off with Mo from CBRE, who's going to tell us how he supported CBRE in transforming the way they hire talent into their organization, continuing along their journey to be world class. Mo, over to you. Thanks very much, Bridget, and uh, hi, everyone. I just want to say it's a great privilege for me to be standing on this stage and actually talking to you all today. I've been really excited about it for a number of weeks. So I'm going to be talking to you about a piece of work that I did at CBRE um, around a transformation that was very significant for our business. So first and foremost, CBRE. So CBRE is the world's number one commercial real estate organization. We employ over 70,000 people worldwide, and that's pretty significant. The piece of work I'm going to be talking to you about is about a transformation that I conducted within our UK business. So CBRE, the problem initially was CBRE used very traditional methods of recruiting in the UK. 80% of recruitment was done through agencies, and 20% was done through word of mouth. A couple of key challenges with this was actually that it took too long for us to recruit, it's a very expensive model to operate, and the quality of candidates that we actually wanted to have was not quite there. Now, the business's strategy was to continue expanding, to get the very best talent um, in the organization, and not lose out to competitors. <coughs> so what was my job? So my job was basically to put together a proposal uh, to solve the problem. Now, the way I did that was basically conducting quite a bit of research. I researched not only our competitors, I researched world-class organizations and respected FTSE 100 companies. I looked at how they went about getting their best talent, whether they used RPOs, whether they had in-house teams, their use of social media, the technology they leveraged. And I basically started putting together a business case. And that business case had to reflect what we would need to do if we had a real chance of actually securing the best talent and solving those issues of you know, speed of hire, quality, reducing our costs, but actually getting a real return on investment. And it was my job to present these to the board. And the board are a very traditional board in that they've been very used to using that traditional method. They're quite averse to change, and they're quite averse to understanding new technology. So my job was also to introduce them to the new technology, such as LinkedIn or applicant tracking systems, such as IBM Connector and Taleo, and actually talk to them about how this technology would solve that solution, but also complement the model that we're proposing and how it would work commercially. And I think the key point I want to make there is it's very important to talk about how technology can benefit your organization commercially. And it's all about how you take the, the board on that transition of interpreting those two things. So putting it all together, so I basically identified the key suppliers that I wanted to work with. I looked at various suppliers of applicant tracking systems. I worked very closely with uh, LinkedIn. And our account director is actually sitting in the first row today, <laughs> Chris Horsnell. So, we worked incredibly closely together all around what the strategy of CBRE was for the business going forward, what the key challenges were, and how these things would actually come together to form a solution that would actually work. Now, in total, this project took me 10 months to run from end to end, from the end of conducting all the research, getting the board bought into the model. Um, in total, we invested around 600,000 pounds for the first year. Um, I had to justify that expenditure, but I also had to justify where the return on investment would actually be as well. So I looked at what the business had spent on recruitment three years previously, and I also looked at headcount forecasts for growth and how much we would typically spend if we continued using you know, agencies for 80%. 
Um, and then I calculated what the return on investment would actually be against the expenditure for the operating model. Now, it was also my job to really justify why these things would work with the board. Now, the board, you all work with boards. They're very challenging individuals. They really want you to be able to justify why this will work and why it will work for your business. And I worked really hardly with every member of the board to talk to them about the technology, the solution, our competitors, what world class actually looked like, and what we could potentially achieve. So delivering on the promise, I had a very robust project plan, um, and again, worked very closely with third party suppliers. So if you're defining something in your business case, whether you're delivering, you know, delivering a applicant tracking system or you're gonna deliver a LinkedIn solution, it's very important that you're clear on what you're gonna be doing by when, but it's also very important that you make your business aware of each stage of the project as well. So are you being successful? Are things being delayed? What does this mean in terms of a, a transition? Um, but also very important, to make your third party suppliers, such as the agencies you're previously working with, aware of the changes that are taking place. Because one of the key things you don't want to happen when you're actually implementing an in-house model or changing the model that you're using already is you don't want to alienate the people that you're actually working with already. So it's important to take them on that journey as well. So I had a number of conversations with our suppliers um, to talk to them about the operating model. And lo and behold, they weren't surprised that we were looking to in-source recruitment because you know, this has happened in many organizations year on year, but the important thing is to keep them on board with your journey, keep them engaged, because the model I put in place was not actually cutting agencies out completely, it was a complementary suite. So, key ingredients for success. It's really important that you know your stakeholders very well. A lot of people will not understand technology solutions. They will not understand recruitment. They will not understand how it relates to the business. You have to dissect every member of your board, and it, you actually have to talk to them one-on-one -on -one before you take your proposal to the board as well. You have to understand what their insecurities are, what their feelings around the business are, and actually really break down and explain why this solution is going to work in order to be compelling when you actually take your business case to the board. It's also incredibly important that you know your business inside out. What is your business strategy? Where has the business come from? Where is it right now? Where is it going forward? It's also very important that you understand the economic cycle of your industry as well. Every separate industry has a very different economic cycle to each other. The real estate cycle typically is a 10-year <coughs> cycle from boom to bust. So it's really important you know where you are in that cycle, whatever industry you work in. Absolutely do your research. Credibility comes from research. Know what your competitors are doing, but know what world-class looks like. If your business has an aspiration to either be world-class or best-in-class, you have to be able to articulate what that actually means, not just for those organizations, but what it would mean for your organization and what that solution would bring to the table in order to become world-class. And most importantly, and this is what I've learned from years of working in different organizations, different industries with different stakeholders, you absolutely have to believe in what you're doing. When you go to work every day and you're proposing a solution and you're taking something to the board, you have to be prepared to put your neck on the line. Because in my experience of working with board years and years, they will absolutely believe in you if you are believing in what you're proposing. And that is absolutely critical. Now, I'm really proud to say that within real estate, we now have the number one recruitment team in real estate. We are absolutely smashing it out of the park when it comes to direct hires, our use of LinkedIn, the number of passive candidates that have now turned active, and our brand profile. Many of you in this room may not have heard of CBRE previously, and we know that's a challenge for us. But through interventions such as you know, having an in-house team, our presence on social media, um, our careers pages, the team we have, we are really publicizing who, link, uh, who CBRE are and the people that we want to get into the business. We don't want to just recruit people from real estate. We are branching out into all different businesses. We also have a significant capital markets business as well. And the only way to be able to attract people in order to support business solution and growth is by leveraging technology such as LinkedIn and reaching out to candidates that you would previously not been reaching out to. Now, in closing, I just want to say the team that I've actually put together are here today, and, and I just really want to say that they've done a fantastic job over the past 12 months. Already, they are returning on that investment that I put into the business case. And to say that you've put a project together, you've spent 600,000 pounds, and actually, within a year, you're already returning on that investment, that gives you some real credibility when you're going back to the board and proving that actually what you talked about can be successful. It's the right thing to do. 
and this can really take us towards a journey of world class. So guys, say hello to everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mo, for sharing the recipe of your success. I don't, know, I don't know why I think this, but I wonder when Mo was putting this presentation together whether he was watching The Great British Bake Off. True or not? Quite true, actually. <laughs> I, I was very inspired by current television, <laughs> current trends. Um, we're now going to hear from Audina, who is going to share with us how she's pioneered a new talent acquisition strategy at Gemelto and the dramatic impact that has had on her KPIs. Over to you. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> yeah. That's hello in Chinese. <laughs> okay, today, um, just give me a little bit of time to share about Gemelto. Gemelto is the world leader in digital security. We enable our clients to bring trusted and convenient digital services to billions of people. We have 14,000 employees worldwide in 46 countries. Let me start by sharing with you that our company have a multi-year development plan, a business plan for 2017. It was key for us to align our talent acquisition strategy to that of the business. In order to do that, I started with an in-depth research. I researched around why some companies are doing great in recruitment. What are the best practices? What works? What fails? What are major talent acquisition trends? I also did an internal analysis of our own company. Where do we stand in terms of recruitment compared to the benchmark? The result demonstrated that we are moderately prepared for these challenges ahead of us. And we are not as proactive as we would love to be. Therefore, it is important to create a sustainable talent acquisition strategy that could last and that we could put in place. So I sat down and started writing a three-year plan. It was not easy. Finally, I managed to write it. <laughs> um, what is in the plan? There were a few key milestones that we have to achieve in each quarter and every quarter for the three years. While there are several key initiatives, for the purpose of this meeting, I'm sharing three with you. Firstly, we launched an employee referral program worldwide. Our employees, 90% of them told us that they find Gemalto a good place to work. So it just makes sense that they recommend their friend. And we ran a campaign around the program to encourage our employees to refer their friends to the company. Secondly, we reduce our headhunting reliance by leveraging on LinkedIn. We launched a global LinkedIn. Um, is John, is Pierre Alexon there? So I think he suffered quite a lot with me during those times. <laughs> we partnered together in order to convince the management that that was the way to go. And on top of the LinkedIn in place, we also put in place a university relations strategy. And that would ensure that we have fresh talent pipeline. And thirdly, we know that the candidate experience is very important for employer branding. So we brainstorm with our managers to ask them what ideas do they have to implement that. Two things was really critical for the execution of the, and implementation of this plan. Firstly, it's the management sponsorship. The management sponsorship comes only when I'm able to articulate to the management what value does the talent acquisition plan <coughs> brings to the business. How do we measure it? And secondly, it was important that everybody team work together. A strong partnership has to be put in place. So we have not only to count on the recruiter, we want the recruiter to be partnering with the HR manager and the hiring manager, as well as all the employees. We know how challenging it is to engage hiring managers. 
So we've designed a masterclass focusing on our hiring managers. And this class, in this class, we show them what is the talent acquisition purpose and mission, where do we want to go, and how do we get there. We involve them in several workshops. There were workshops around how they can contribute to a great candidate experience throughout the recruitment process. There was a workshop around um, how they could mobilize their team members to refer their friends. They were also involved in telling us, I mean, we really had engaged them, so we make them talk and do the work. So finally, they were convinced at the end of the session that we're not going to make it for our great talent acquisition strategy if we are not partnering as a team. With this great team in place and a strong partnership, we were able to deliver the numbers. What's more convincing to the leaders than showing them what we can achieve together? So firstly, we reduced our reliance of headhunting from 41% to 20% in two years. And we do that by leveraging LinkedIn. It was 1% two years ago, and now it represents 15% of our successful hires. And on top of that, we have our university relations strategy and also our referral program. And secondly, we increased the speed of hire by 25%. It was not easy to fulfill cost of hire decreasing, at the same time increasing the speed of hire. Um, thirdly, we're glad that we did not compromise on the quality of hire. We had a slight improvement on our quality of hire, and we were still striving to do better. The third point was really important for Gemalto because we have a strong HR philosophy that revolves around promotion from within. Who we hire today may very likely be our leaders of tomorrow. So with a strong partnership and a good plan in place, we were able to demonstrate to the leaders that their investment to our projects is a very high return on investment. And we are able to continue to finance the various talent acquisitions projects that's going to you know, be in the pipeline from now to the end of next year. Thank you. Thank you, Audina. We're now going to hear from Xavier who's going to talk to us about how he puts social at the heart of strategy at SAGE and how he educates leaders on how to be social in their talent acquisition strategy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Adina. Okay. Uh, I'd like to start with a pilot story. I really enjoyed the uh, pilot analogy this morning to create the emotions and give a bit more of context. I have a very special relationship with Talent Connect. Um, a while back, probably five years ago, I was still a very junior marketer. I wanted to change the world with social. Um, and the uh, LinkedIn team from Paris told me, Xavier, you better come to the London Talent Connect. You may learn things. So I took the Eurostar. I came. And I was tweeting the uh, keynote from Jeff Winner, the LinkedIn CEO. And while I was tweeting, Jeff started to show my work on screen. The night before, they decided to pick my work and to detail some of the actions I, I was putting in place at that time at a, in a different uh, company. So today my plan is trying to give you back as much as I received, if not more, over the last years uh, attending the LinkedIn events. I'd like to start a bit about Sage. Um, the mission of Sage, which is the largest tech company in the UK, is to energize the success of businesses through the imagine, imagination of our people, and this is what I'm doing here now, sharing with you um, the things we're doing with our social education to our leaders and our products, smart technology products. I'd like to start with an important stat that says in 2020, 50% of the total workforce is going to be the millennials' generation. And this is a very important starting point in our journey as Sage, because when we faced these statistics, we know and we knew that we had to change our behavior, 
we had to adapt our strategy in our work um, to be more aggressive to acquire new talents, that we had to change as well the talent to execute the strategy flawlessly. We decided to put social media at the heart of our EVP. We want the Sage people to be trained, to be known as one of the best social team in the world. This is my mission, and this is the mission I'm working with uh, the great HR people at Sage. We started with the top. We started with the leaders. Um, I really like the uh, AXA story this morning because we're on the same journey. We have a unique story with uh, Stephen Kelly, our CEO, who joined us last November. And Stephen is very social. He's truly social. He, uh, he runs his own LinkedIn profile. He blogs. He tweets. Um, and he has been elected already in the UK as the most social CEO of the FTSE 100 companies. So he's a real leader on social. However, that doesn't make any, like, there is still work to do. It's not that easy. But Stephen has made it very clear to all of the executive leaders at Sage that they need to be social to connect to the world we're living in. We, uh, if you check at the hashtag of Talent Connect, you see all the connections happening in the room. It's all about the LinkedIn uh, platform as well. Um, and we designed a plan to put all these guys, all these leaders on social starting from the board of directors to everyone in the business. I will detail more later on the rest of the business. <coughs> so we organized executive coaching session, private sessions, reverse mentoring session. We tried to overcome all the barriers that we need a strong plan. We had a good plan that was not 100% perfect. And we started from there. And we executed to make sure this would happen. And this has happened. If today you check the profiles of our executives, uh, I'm quite proud of the work we achieved. Two main drivers I want to share on how to, uh, to crack with the executive's work, because we have all been in situations where we try to explain what we want to achieve, and it's hard to get the point. First thing is always start with the personal brand. Make sure that they shine, and make sure to fix their profile. Uh, making sure as well sometimes they have the, good, the right job. They may, have already, uh, they may still have their job in the past. The second uh, key driver for executive is always tie social to value for the business and how does it help to achieve the execution of the strategy with immediate actions and concrete actions. Moving on, the first result that we saw that by getting the Sage leaders socially active, we started to attract the right talents. Um, the talent team can, can share example. It's, it has been amazing. You start to police the profiles. You get these guys active on LinkedIn, active on Twitter. Um, and you see that the right people coming in. And then you, you see, oh, that's perfectly matching our strategy, uh, the, the, the company strategy. So that's really perfect. If you check today a good example of uh, my Twitter profile and LinkedIn profile, you will see that I've put a special hero banner uh, make it, like where I say, I'm looking for superstars and rock stars. This is what we're looking for at Sage. Um, in, the, in the talent battle, we want to fight to get the best social people that are going to make a difference. Then my mission is slightly larger than getting the leaders and executive. It's how do I get an army of 14,000 social recruiters? This is my mission. A quick insight of something really big that happened at Sage. This was a very important milestone. This was a one-day event called Sociable Day. We organized 100 sessions in 30-plus countries around the world, from Brazil to Australia. We covered up all our offices. These were one-hour mandatory face-to-face -face session to be trained or enabled, activated on social. Some of the results um, are big. So this is a photo from Brazil that you see on the left. I was receiving tweets all day from colleagues saying, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, w I love this company. I love Sage. We had 3.5 social million impressions in one day. If you compare that to, the sp to media spend, this is big. Uh, and I'd like to share an example from last night, is that we, we have announced yesterday a new campus in Atlanta. And we have so many people tweeting the good news about Sage through social advocacy, like platforms like Elevate is that we, trending on, we trended on Twitter in the uh, entire Georgia region. And this is the third 
time in six months. We trended last week in Dublin in, and in Hunter Ireland, and we trended in, um, in the US last summer during a large event. And it's hard to trend. And this is a very big result and achievement. The last point uh, about my presentation is at Sage, we decided to open social for everyone. I couldn't find a reason for not playing big. Uh, I love small pilots, but I'm much more a believer of scaling up small pilots very quickly. When you see the first indicators going green, play win to, be, to win big, uh, and this is what we do at Sage. But I provided a good framework. We have, we have released new social media guidelines, very simple, based on two of our key values. The first one is always put the customers first on social, and you'll be sure to do the right things. Um, because we know how it's hard to get your people on social. People are, are afraid, starting with the leaders, uh, because they have much more responsibility. But um, we had to make it easy to open the gig to everyone. In conclusion, I'd like to share three key takeaways. Uh, I covered already this is social education for everyone. This is key in getting the leaders because this is how you tie um, to the business results. Getting your social leaders is your call. Same thing, if you believe that you have the right skills, the right plan to get your leaders, this is your call. Lock them in a room and do this private coaching session with them. Nobody is going to blame you. They will love it. If you tie that to personal brand and to ROI on how this will help to execute better the strategy, you'll be, uh, you'll be rewarded. <laughs> and in conclusion, if you put the talents at the heart on how you create value on social, this is going to be the road to success and um, demonstrating the value to your leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xavier. And we're going to open up for questions from the audience very soon. But whilst you think of your questions, I have a few to ask of each of the speakers. So Mo, to you first. Um, how do you track success of your project? What are the KPIs? I mentioned in my presentation that I set some KPIs up front around speed of hire, quality of hire, and cost. But I think the board are more interested in other things, not just those things. And things like how much capacity have we created for our hiring managers to actually free up time to work with clients and generate new business. But also things like how many more followers do we actually have, passive candidates who are more willing to engage with CBRE as a brand than we previously had. Those things are really, really important to be able to articulate back to the board. What have you delivered above and beyond your original business case? But more importantly, what does the business think about the transformation? Has it made a difference? So on my piece of work, I went back to the hiring managers a year later, and I talked to them about the difference it made for them, their people, and their business, and the impact it had on their clients with having an in-house recruitment team in place. Thanks, Mo. And what about diversity? We've heard a lot about that. How do you track your diversity? So I also mentioned earlier, be very aware of your business strategy. So one of the business strategies at CBRE is all about increasing diversity. Uh, we've proudly also been the first and only company in real estate to just have signed up to the national equality standard. Now, why is that important for recruitment? Well, because recruitment plays a very key part in the diversity and the future talent of an organization. And we're hoping to try and lead the way in real estate to really change hearts and minds when it comes to the profile of people in the industry and really reflect the world we live in. Thanks, Mo. And a question for you, Aldina. Um, the project that you've implemented is a quite a big change for your organization. How did you convince your leaders to go with that project and your recommendations? And how long did that take? I am quite a fortunate lady <laughs> because the management themselves were convinced that we needed a talent acquisition strategy in place to tie in with a business plan. Mm. But that being said, it does not mean that I'm given a big fat check to go on a shopping spree. On the contrary, I had to give strong arguments on all the investment I make in any projects. So firstly, I think it's important to have a sustainable talent acquisition plan in place. Secondly, once you have that plan, prepare a sales pitch. You don't have a lot of chance to convince your management. The first meeting you have with the management, you need to nail it, meaning 
that you must be yourself very convinced before you start going to convince others. And you must be passionate about the subject. And thirdly, show the results. Measure it, align, and there you go, I think. Thank you.